Right, so that's 10 o'clock and welcome to this ordinary meeting of the Douglas Shire Council <coughs> being held on Tuesday 25th of January 2022 at the Mossman Council Chambers. I hereby give notice that in accordance with section 277E of the Local Government Regulations 2012 that the ordinary meeting of council be restricted in numbers of public attendance because of the health and safety reasons associated with the public health emergency involving COVID-19. This ordinary meeting of council will be available to view via live stream on council's website and will be available for others to watch at a later time. I'd like to acknowledge the Gugu people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay respect to their elders, both past, <coughs> present and emerging, and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians who may be listening or watching our meeting this morning. I note all councillors are present and we do have our, our Chief Financial Officer standing in for our Acting CEO today. Uh, we have the media present and we have some minimal amount of staff and a member of the public in the gallery. Councillors, any conflicts of interest today? No. Um, for clarity, Councillor Zamataro, I mean, Councillor McEwen has put a motion forward uh, which heavily uh, covers caravan parks in the bottom of his motion. Clarifying with you if that situation's changed at all from previously? Uh, we had this discussion earlier on, and there was a motion moved by you, Mayor Kerr, that it's in the public interest of Councillor Zamatara participates and votes on Item 3 Operational Plan Initiative, continued to investigate opportunities in RV strategy, and therefore a reasonable person will trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. And that was for the RV strategy. Yeah. 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 We discussed this also. <coughs> Councillor McEwen's put forward, he's obviously trying to cover off on the issues that some caravan park operators have had, so he has mentioned caravan parks in it as well. So well, we're talking I'm about Mossman. Having bring, some Mossman. I'm bringing it up for you, that's all. Okay. Well, we discussed it before, and we was clear, it was clear in here that I was okay to participate in this conversation. But that's up to you, guys. I'm going to put it to a vote just for the clarity of the councillors, because. Yes, I agree when it comes to RV parks, totally. Um, but I do have concerns because this has got two sections of it that involve caravan parks as well, that that may create... And that's why I didn't declare a conflict of interest, because we had already clarified yep. that earlier. So um, I will put forward that I do believe that there is a conflict in that section. Um, I think we need to put it to the vote for councillors whether they agree or disagree on that. Um, clarify what the conflict of interest is there? Councillor Zamatara, the previous issue? Oh, that my sister and her husband uh, operate a council run caravan park at Port Douglas. So, whilst we're talking about the RV strategies, <coughs> I totally agree that, you know, that's part of it, but this. But this will be fulfilling an RV into. strategy, so I think it's very much part of what's already been voted on in the past twice from memory or just once? Twice. Then. Twice. This motion work with all Douglas Shire caravan park operators. That's changing. Okay, I'm just going to put it to the vote to councillors, those councillors that believe that Councillor Zamatara has a conflict of interest. Are you positive? Yeah. No. Those who don't? Okay, so that is a great... From here, that there isn't, but um, yeah. Okay. Just that. So. Because <coughs> there is a perception and there's a, an actual. Yeah. Okay. All right, no mayoral minute. Um, we're going to the confirmation. So, the ordinary council meeting held on Tuesday, the 14th of December 2021, for the minutes. Have a move for that, please. Yep. Councillor McEwen, seconded by Councillor Swamerson. Any comments? <clears throat> Put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried. Special meeting held on Tuesday, 21st of December 2021. If there is a mover for that one, please. Councillor Swamerson, seconded by Councillor Nolly, was it? Yep. Any comments for that one? Put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried. <clears throat> so 
takes us to the agenda items as listed. Okay, our first one is for the Worry Park Maintenance Program. The recommendation is that Council resolves to endorse the Worry Park Maintenance Program. Do we have a mover for that one, please? Councillor Stomerson. I'm happy to second that one. Councillor Stomerson, just to speak to it. Uh, all I'd like to say is that it's uh, a well-written report, and, uh, and I just hope that now um, the residents that live around the park um, are aware of what they can and can't do, and a maintenance schedule when the um, park will be mowed and things like that. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Any other comments from councillors? Councillor Questions, thank you. Just two fairly quick questions. Um, it says in the report that by far the majority of CRMs are requesting the treatment of trees to rectify problems with adjacent infrastructure. I was just wondering what the actual infrastructure was. Like roots, passing. Uh, roots and, and leaves, yeah. Okay, thank you. And then also, I, I, I think um, probably the majority of councils have also received uh, uh, a few emails of concerns. One of the um, questions brought up was that apparently there have been 72 trees that have been uprooted um, from, <laughs> from residents, and the question was whether those trees will be replaced. Of course, I'm not 100% certain on the actual number of trees that have been removed from Warri Park. There has been um, substantial instances of illegal clearing throughout the park. Um, the, the intent of council is to replace trees, however, it will not be a revegetation program and we will not be putting trees directly adjacent to the infrastructure again. Council's intent is also to plan appropriately placed shade trees throughout the open spaces. Thank you. Okay. With that, then, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried. <coughs> 5.2. Building Better Regions Fund Round 6 co-contribution. The recommendation is that Council endorses applications to the Building Better Regions Fund at Round 6 for A, Rex Mill Park uh, playground renewal upgrade and B, Kuya Beach res Reservoir connection. Two commits 25% contribution in the 22 23 budget towards eligible project costs for each project if successful. And three delegates authority to the Chief Executive Officer under Section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to administer all matters in relation to the above. Do you have a mover for that one, please? Oh, Councillor Nolly, you got there? Seconder? Councillor McEwen. Councillor Nolly, would you like to speak to it? Um, yeah, OK, thank you. Um, well, look, I'm, it's always good to look for uh, funding as opposed to obviously paying out 100% ourselves. Um, I'm glad that it's only a, a quarter or 25%. I think that's a very positive. Um, obviously, we all know that um, water sustainability and, and infrastructure work is hugely important in this shire, as is in every shire, I think, perhaps in all of Australia, really. Um, and I'm really happy to look uh, to go forward for the Rex Mill playground renewal or, or upgrade. Um, I, I think the proposed uh, structure is, is very interesting. It's interesting to note that green ants are endemic to this part of Australia, more or less, to, to Australia in this part in particular. Um, I just uh, would like... Uh, Further participation uh, as councillors and perhaps as public for the you know the final footprint and things like that. But I'm very happy to endorse this uh, recommendation. Thank you. Thank and I have you. a question eventually. Just one small question. Do you like to do that now? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering about the uh, costings of the playground. It's estimated at 1.4 million, which seems like a huge amount of money. And I'm just wondering where that figure has come from. 
Uh, through the chair, Councillor Nolley, thanks for your question. Uh, the figure is based uh, on the initial cost <coughs> estimate on the uh, design concept that was supplied by our landscape architect. So it, it does have um, a fair bit of experience and substance to it. Okay, so it's provided by the landscape ar architect. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak against? Any other comments from councillors? No? Great. I agree it's really important that we take hold of these opportunities with the grant funds and we make the best out of them for things that we are planning for the Shire. So we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. 5.3, contract WO5781-001 PDWWTP sequencing batch reactor diffuser upgrade. The recommendation is that Council resolves to award the design portion of contract WO5781-001 PDWWTP sequencing batch reactor diffuser upgrade to Exylum Water Solutions Australia Limited. Uh, for $15,000, GST exclusive, and if ordered, award the construction portion of the contract W057810012 to Exolum Water Solutions Australia Limited for $683,840, GST exclusive, and then delegates authority under Section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to negotiate, finalise and execute any and all matters in relation to this contract. We have a move at this one, please. Councillor Scomerson, seconded by... Councillor McEwen. Uh, Councillor Scomerson, would you like to speak to it? No, sure. Anyone wish to speak against? Any other comments from councillors? Mm. No? Mm. Okay. Uh, very important that we get a uh, water situation and uh, refuge plants working efficiently, so it's a good thing in that respect. So we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And it's carried unanimously. <clears throat> 5.4, contract W05462, Kia Beach Cycleway, Section 2. Uh, the recommendations council resolves the award contract W05462, Kia Beach Cycleway, Section 2, to Colpo Construction Proprietary Limited... Uh, for $841,005 GST exclusive, and then delegates authority under Section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to negotiate, finalise and execute any and all matters in relation to this contract. Do we have a mover for that, please? Councillor Scomerson? Seconded by? Yep. Councillor McEwen? Councillor Scomerson, would you like to speak to it? Um, no, all, all I have to say is that, you know, it's great that we get to the Section 2 and um, it's a really good outcome for this community to be able to have so, um, bike lanes. So. Anyone wish to speak against? Any other comments from councillors? No? No, I agree. It's, yeah, this is... A great uh, project, having the cycleway run through to Mosman, you know, it'll just be brilliant uh, for the locals there in Key Beach. Put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. OK, 5.5. The financial report, December 2021. Uh, the recommendation is that Council notes the financial report for the December 21 period. Ever move for that one, please? <laughs> Councillor Scommerson, I'm happy to second that one. <coughs> Councillor Scommerson, do you wish to speak to it? Um, I don't envy you a job. I, I certainly don't, but, you know, another good month of uh, work. And you can see we're trying very hard to, you know, try and get our, bu uh, our budget online. So um, you do a good job. But... Do you wish to speak against? Any other comments from councillors? No. No. Wonderful. Again, yep. Potting through the year. We're past the halfway mark now, so we're heading towards the end goal again. So it's all running along nicely. Um, with that, we'll put to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried. 
5.6, the operational plan progress report for October to December 21. The Council notes the progress and implementation of the operational plan 21 to 22. Mover for this one. Oh, sorry. Councillor Zanatar had his finger in the air there. Did I? I'm sorry. I was getting confused. Councillor Scomerson, you're happy to second? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Councillor Zanatara, would you like to speak to it? Oh, no, thank you, Mayor Kerr. We're moving on along the best we can in the situation we're in. So. Anyone wish to speak against? Any other comments from councillors? We'll put it to the vote then. All those in favour? And that's carried. 5.7, a report from the Chief Executive Officer for the period of October to December 21. The recommendation is the Council receives and notes the organisational report card and the report from the Chief Executive Officer for the period October to December 2021. Um, I'm happy to move this one. Can we have a seconder for it, please? Sure. Councillor McEwen. Um, as always, I highly recommend everyone to have a read through this document because it's not to you actually see it. You know, they say a picture tells a thousand words and to, to look through it and actually see some of the progress and some of the work that this council does is just astonishing in the, the time that we have. And I think we say it quite regularly for a small council, we achieve big goals and these documents certainly do show it and do prove what we actually do. So very happy to, to have this uh, noted. Anyone wish to speak against? Right. Any other comments from councillors? It's just a good read. That's all. <coughs> very, very good read. With that, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that is carried. All right, that finishes our list of items, which takes us through to 6.1, which is the notice of motion. I'd like to make a point before we start on that, please. Uh, I'm just wondering if Councillor McEwen a question if he's comfortable with the crux of this RV strategy is to boost local business and people are, you know, eating more in cafes and locally. Um, is, can that be seen as a conflict of interest? Councillor McEwen, you feel comfortable with that? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, no, I'm comfortable with that because of the fact that I remember we had this discussion with um, one of the legal team early in our, our ten years councillors to say that um, even though you're in business, doesn't mean you've got to be, unless it's, if this was something directly with my business, I would, I would say yes, but just by having a business in the, in the communities, um, I, I do not see that that's a... Okay. Okay. So yeah. the fact that your business liable to profit from this is not, not a plus. Okay. okay. So I just want to his make point his business will not make any other gain greater than any other person yeah, in the one, community. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, it's in the conflicts of interest that was discussed recently and there's actually been another... Um, motion being put forward to the state to clarify that completely. Um, you know, the list that we have shows the difference between a you know, prescribed conflict and a perceived conflict. Mm -hmm. you know, and you know, I'm just looking at the prescribed conflict right now, which clearly states that a close associate includes a spouse, a parent, a child or a sibling um, for any matter that relates to an application or submission to council. Um, you know, the the councillors cannot partake in it. So, again, I'm clarifying that. Uh, all right, Councillor McEwen, if you'd like to start the read. <coughs> mm -hmm. If you just put your notice of motion forward, then we'll ask for a seconder on it. Okay, I hereby give notice of my intention to move the following motion for the Council meeting scheduled for Tuesday, the 25th of January, 2022. That Council resolves to progress with option B in the RV Park business case. Two, resolves to dispose of surplus parcels of land as per the strategic freehold and general policy to fund a suitable land purchase for the RV park. Three, resolves to acquire an appropriate parcel of land for the development of an RV park as per the strategic freehold um, and general policy. Four, utilises the tourism and economic development offices and tourism uh, Port Douglas Daintry to develop a caravan, RV and camping marketing strategy for the benefit of the whole Douglas Shire. Five, work with all uh, Douglas Shire caravan park operators to ensure that they benefit, benefit from the increase of the market's 
uh, strategy and six delegates authority to the, the CEO under section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to administrate, uh, minister all matters in relation to the above. Um, I'm happy to second that for you. <coughs> you may read. Okay. Fog up here. Okay, the background. This is not the first time the RV proposal has um, been raised to Council. I wish to put this motion to the Council in an effort to have this proposal either moved or defeated, as this has been a long drawn out matter which we cannot seem to progress on, and many hours of officers' time have been spent on it. <coughs> First consultation was made in 2017 when the RV Association, which is a CMCA, uh, approach to examine if there was interest in the Douglas Shire for the creation of an RV park. A consultation was carried out and proceeded no further. Two years ago, the CMCA again approached Council to gauge if the situation has been, uh, may have changed. This motion is to move forward with option B, which was submitted to the Council at the meeting 14th of September 2021, which a decision was deferred. To me, it's a win-win situation. We can make available a facility that will benefit the whole Shire. Currently, we do not attract this type of visitor to our Shire as we are not an RV friendly Shire. This has been confirmed by the CMCA. These tourists would also venture through our Shire and provide additional night's accommodation. Bundaberg Shire also saw an increase in RVs also staying in caravan parks that would accommodate due to visitors wanting to stay longer in the Shire than they were allowed to stay at the RV park. We must also increase the marketing to capture caravans and campers to the Shire through the cooperation of the Port Douglas and Daintree Tourism Association and Council's Tito's. The RV traveller market is the fastest growing domestic tourism sector in Australia and has been for the past 15 years. Tourism Research Australia statistics show that 2016 recorded the highest growth in domestic caravanning and camping overnight trips, uh, trips since data was first collected in 1998. Total visitor nights of caravanning and camping grew by 11.7 million trips in 2016 over the previous 12 months to produce 51.6 million visitor nights, a growth of 18%. As of May 2021, there are 750,000 registered RVs in Australia, 669,000 caravans, and 72,000 motorhomes and camper vans having a 10% growth rate since 2015. Caravans and camper vans represent the two fastest growing sectors of vehicle type in Australia. For this reason, I believe that the RV proposal be pursued with the intention of attracting RVs, caravans and campers to the Douglas Shire. The Council's Tourism, Economic and Development Officer and Tourism uh, Port Douglas and Daintree must work in conjunction to market these untapped visitors to our Shire. There are three different target areas, the traditional caravans, the campers, and the RVs. We have in place the physical caravan parks and some camping areas, but we need a designated RV park. It is estimated that the RV travel will increase by more than 60% over the next 10 years. Since 2016, the proportion of RV members more inclined to visit a town uh, if it is RV friendly town, has increased by 64% to 85%. The CMCA now has 330 RVFTs, uh, which it's RV town, which you must provide designated parking in the town on solid level surface and short term parking, and an RVFD, which is RV friendly destination which is a RVFT requirements plus longer term parking RV park. My motion is to have this reputation changed. Queensland Tourism 2013 identified RV travellers on the road spend more than $700 per week while on the road. In a CMCA survey 2019, members indicated an average spend of $542 per week when on the road with an average 105 days per year covering an average of over 10,000 kilometres. The recently opened RV park in Bundaberg, which was 2018, visitors spent an average of $273 per RV night, 
This is equivalent to over $2.7 million economic injection into their local economy. Um, I've just got a chart there which came from the, the CMS um, Bundaberg. Um, Bundaberg and Ingham provided that information. You don't need, need to go line by line. Now, Council conducted a community consultation last year as per previously presented business plan. In brief, 383 people responded. 93% of the respondents agree an RV park would be good in Mossman at, for the Mossman economy. 70% of respondents preferred 50 sites over 20. 72 businesses responded to the survey. 71 agreed that an RV park would be uh, good for the Mossman economy. One was neutral. 237 residents responded. 93% agree an RV park and an RV park would be good for the Mossman economy. Three were neutral, 4% disagreed or strongly disagreed. Five or 13 caravan park owners in the Shire strongly objected to the council creating an RV park in Mossman or indeed anywhere in the Shire. For this reason, that is why I'm suggesting that the council's tourism um, and economic development officer and the Port Douglas Sanctuary Children develop a marketing campaign to target caravans as well as camping and RVs. RVs do not come to this region at present. We are bypassed. Um, there are some comments there from different councillors. Would you like me to read them? Yeah. Um, well, uh, Tara Bennett, um, the TPDD is fully supportive of the establishment of an RV park in Mossman. The township has been identified as having a range of services RV travellers seek. This travel group will provide a significant boost to economic activity for the small business community of Mossman and surrounding Port Douglas. The current collection of Douglas Shire Caravan Parks provide a different offering to what RV owners seek and the uh, TPDD believes a new facility will complement and indeed add to the significant draw cards the region currently, region currently has for travellers. The, reason, the region's tourism Recovery is going to depend on new travel markets as well as previous, previously well-established sectors. The RV travel group will be a welcome addition to the Douglas Shire visitor mix. Uh, Mayor Andrew Wilcox from Whitsunday Regional Council. Uh, in, the, in the Whitsundays we have four main towns and we have three RV stays for 72 hours in two of the towns on council-owned uh, or operated land. The first one built was in Collinsville. This was successful. We have a receipt box so the RV visitors, uh, visitors can show what they spend in town if they want to. Receipts for the last few years showed a total of $370,000. This town did not have a caravan park. The second one was built in Proserpine. I don't have the numbers but we are hugely successful. The only other caravan park in town is council owned. We put, we put a sign up and promote our park and a lot a lot of people stay longer and move around our parks and pay. When we went to 72 hours to make sure we had achieved a spend in town, sometimes with 24 hours people just stay and move on. Uh, Andrew Graffin, the CEO of uh, Cassowary, the RV Park has significantly benefited the local community with 2,378 nights booked, 2.48 average nights per stay, $146.60 average spend per RV per night, over $398,000 local spend a result of this within the local community. Peter Franks, the CEO of Mariba Shire. The RV community play an important part in our Shire's uh, economy and Council goes out of its way to make sure our Shire an attractive destination for them. With the border closes last year, we saw only minimal numbers of RVs prepared to usual, many of the local businesses um, commented to us on the impact. As you probably know, the Mariba Rodeo Association, Association have set up their grounds to accommodate these RV travellers, and many of them spend considerable amount of time there. Not only is this a great money earner for the association, but it's used benefits for the rest of the businesses in town. Council has recently approved the leasing of a parcel of land which we own, freehold, to the CMCA. The parcel is very close to the CBD. This will be set up very short term stays, two nights max at this stage, so as not to compete with the Rodeo Association. 
We also help and support the RV Christmas in July event held in Mariba annually. This event sees hundreds of RVs arrive in town and this event certainly sees an injection of cash into the economy. The cost to council. Uh, during previous council di uh, discussions we have had officers search for various parcels of land that may be suitable. Council or the ratepayers have many parcels of land which have been identified as surplus. The CMCA states the preferable site should be within close walking vicinity to main shopping, social and dining facilities. My proposal is for the council officers to identify suitable surplus land owned by Douglas Shire, the ratepayers, to the equivalent value or slightly higher to dispose of that land to purchase a more suitable parcel of land that would suit this venture. There would be no cost to the ratepayers. It's a land swap on the books of council. The RV Park Operator, CMCA, has initially advised they would be interested and they are Australia's largest RV Park Operator and boosts a membership of over 80,000 members nationally. Providing suitable land can be provided, CMCA would lease the parcel of land at a commercial rate from council. They pay the applicable rates over the property to council. They will cover costs associated with the development of the site as follows. Access and roadways into and within the park is required. Fence or bollards to restrict access to the main gate. The main gate and signage. Um, uh, dump point, and so that's a wash down tap. Potable water taps as required around the site. One powered site including the power connection for the custodian. A sheltered shed and concrete pad. And required levelling, landscaping and planting. All Infrastructure development is organised and funded by the CMCA. The cost may vary depending on the site, but it would be expected that the development cost would be uh, in the $5,200,000 range. All vehicles that use this site must be self-contained vehicles. A uh, little note there on the planting. It would be expected that the landscaping and planting of this site would be uh, completed to a high standard to, to make this an attractive area and not a vehicle parking area. The CMCA arranged for the custodian to be on site to manage and maintain the site. There is no cost to the council ratepayers. It is actually an income while only small producing asset. And there's a list of um, attached documents. Thank you. Would anyone like to speak against? Okay. I'll go there. Councillor Nolan. Thank you. In five months' time, we're going to see our budget has gone from an operating budget deficit of 2.3 million to 2.99, basically $3 million dollar deficit. And with long-term financial forecasts not shown as surplus until 2029, there's seven long more years. Our water, our future water security is highly topical for good reasons. Millions must be spent for water sustainability. The wastewater treatment plants need upgrading, and I believe upgrading the Port Douglas wastewater treatment plant to accept salt water, so boats may dump their waste there, has to be a council priority. The freehold land policy states that land sales will only proceed to fund future capital expenditure projects. That's page two of the policy. It is a far stretch of the imagination to argue that this is a capital <coughs> works project when we have so much more important things to spend money on. Water security, wastewater infrastructure upgrades, road and bridge upgrades, footpaths, lightning and security for our community, safety, um, stormwater and drainage, which at the moment is quite atrocious in Port Douglas, not due to this council, but this is the way it is. These are some examples of true capital works projects. Financial sustainability, sustainability is at the forefront of any council's position mandate, and selling land assets to fund CMCA's activity I find personally quite ludicrous. Also, I believe they would have to go to tender and not be solely offered to CMCA. That's just a side point. I will not support selling council land to buy other land. If we want an RV park, utilise what we have. So what do we do? I believe it's quite simple. One example is to encourage the use of the current planning scheme provisions. Um, the, the planning scheme allows property owners to make a little bit of income themselves by using it to, for RV parking. Maybe 
Douglas should uh, look at um, using TPDD or our TDOs to really um, encourage the use of such things such as hip cam, just as an example. Allow the people of Douglas to put a coin in their own pockets instead of leasing to an organisation based in Wickham, New South Wales. Let's do it in Douglas. The CMCA has a grand total of 11 RV parks in all of Australia, and it doesn't cover all the states or territories. I believe there must be a good reason why other councils are not taking on this expense. So go back to use it as an example, hip camps. They cover all of the national, state and regional parks, which comes out to be more than 50,000 campgrounds and campsites across Australia. Um, I just say, don't spend money or land swap for an organisation based in New South Wales. Allow the residents of Douglas to get on with the Act and put coin in their own pockets. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak in the affirmative for this? Okay, well, I certainly will be. I believe that I congratulate Councillor McEwen for bringing this forward because it was a lot of work went into it by the officers. You can see that in the report itself. Uh, this is a financial win-win situation for the residents and the businesses of Mossman. The amount of income that this would generate for Mossman Township, which means the jobs that would be available in this township, um, you know, that is one of the reasons why this council is here, is to look after its residents. Um, we don't know the land. Every single ratepayer here does. And if we can benefit them, then that's what this is about. This isn't a cost to the ratepayers, it's a land swap. You know, it's a perfect situation to be able to create a great income stream for the people who live here, who then they can also spend their money here as well and creates an economy within this township. And I think, you know, just ignoring that because I don't want to sell a block of land, it's like we're not changing our assets, we're just moving them across to something that will generate an income. Yes, there are absolutely capital works that need to be done, and we are certainly working towards those. You know, there has been no proposals put forward to let's sell um, land that's uh, surplus to already do these. You know, we're sitting here, you know, waiting for our budgets to, you know, see next year where we're sitting and what we're doing. Um, doing this land swap will certainly not change our surplus or our deficit. If anything, it would probably assist long term because people would have more money to spend. And, Money would just goes around in circles, um, but I absolutely support the motion that Councillor McEwen has put forward, and um, I will be supporting it today. Anyone else wish to speak against it? Thank Councilor you, Mayor. Yes, through you, I don't wish to speak. The reason I thought it was important that I did participate today is because I've had multiple conversations with ratepayers, not caravan park owners, ratepayers themselves, who were concerned about the consultation. The consultation did not tell them where the park would possibly be. A lot that voted assumed that for some reason, I don't know where it came from, that the showgrounds was going to be a spill, an area of spill and that's where it was going to go. Had that detail been available, they would have voted differently as what a lot of the ratepayers have told me. And they didn't realise council assets were going to be used to supply this, which is, you know, getting rid of land could be important to us later on when we're trying to rebuild our infrastructure, our ailing infrastructure, I should add. That was the only reason that I thought I should be involved in this conversation, not to do it parks, to do it rate pays, worry, concerns about it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll take this opportunity as the chair, because I'm still very concerned about it, there's a difference between a perceived conflict and uh, you know, a, a conflict <laughs> where you have a direct family member involved in this motion, and I'm, I'm stressing that to you, I really am, because that's concerning me. I've been trying to look it up while we're sitting here. Councillor Scommerson? You've been trying to look up while you're sitting there, you said? Yes. Because it, I'm really concerned about it. You, you, you can't it. vote on it. You, cannot, you can only vote on perceived conflicts of interest. All right. That's what I've just looked up. Councillor Scommerson? Okay. Um, <clears throat> this motion needs to be resolved today as it's been a waste of staff resources and time where councillors should be focusing on more important issues in the Shire. We currently have 13 caravan parks in the Shire, which three are owned by council. 
Most of caravan paths are operated by local families who employ local staff. I would like to bring to your attention to the Douglas Recreational Vehicle Strategy 2017 to 2021, which is a well-written document aimed in assisting to improve visitors' experience to the region to help inform and support the increasing number of RV travellers to be able to access services and facilities and enhance the profile of the region and make this shire an RV-friendly shire. This document, document needs to be revised and implemented with the help of TPDD and, um, and Chamber of Commerce, our TDO positions and the Ratepayers Association who will be working with our caravan parks for a win-win outcome. The document clearly states that all commercial operators provide a range of camping options which are in close proximity to townships and locations and provides approximately 890 camping sites for RVs, caravans and tents. This does not include the high camps that are popping up in our shire. Three to four months of the year, the caravan parks in this shire are well used by visitors and this is where this council should be working with our caravan parks in proposing sites for overflow if we need, example, the Mossman Showgrounds. It states in the document that the showgrounds has provisional approval from the Queensland Government to permit RVs to use this site for overnight stays. Not sure if this is still valid, but this is why I believe that the Douglas Recreational Vehicle Strategy needs to be revised and acted on and implemented as soon as possible to open our shire for the increasing RV movement in this country. So why do we need another RV caravan park in this shire? If this council wants to dispose of surplus parcels of land, use these funds to fix our dying infrastructure like our water pipes in this shire, which is decaying and wasting one of the most valuable resources we have, not spend that money on land for an RV park. To state this motion that RVs do not come to this region is at, um, at present is incorrect and misinforming. Our existing caravan parks provide camping for RVs of all types. Example of the amount of RVs during our holiday season, you can just see them all parked outside Woolies doing their grocery shopping. Our current caravan parks provide a great service in our shire. And I believe that introducing an RV park will see some of our caravan parks close their doors and staff lose their jobs. As they are not able to compete with this RV park, it will provide cheaper accommodation. Yes, an RV park has worked in other shows, but they do not have 13 caravan parks and have to compete with, with them. By allowing this motion to go through, it's denying our ratepayers revenue in council caravan parks which will have to be made up elsewhere, possibly in rates. As a councillor, I support local businesses, ratepayers and residents in this shire. And this council should be working with our caravan parks to capture this fast-growing tourism industry by updating the RV strategy plan and implementing it as soon as possible instead of trying to recreate something we already have. Councillor McKeown, would you like to have a closing argument? Yeah, just a couple of points. Um, Not being a, an RV friendly town, they, they just don't come here, so we don't see very many of them. When the survey is being conducted, I travelled around to um, a lot of the band parks and had a look myself, and there were very few RVs in the caravan parks. As we've spoken before, these people spend a couple of hundred thousand dollars having all their facilities with them. They do not need or they do not wish to stay in caravan parks, they just buy the, bypass the Shire completely because they don't need the amenities that the caravan parks provide. I do not believe that having an RV park would affect the caravan parks very much, if anything, as was seen and was mentioned to me by the Mayor of Bundaberg. They actually had an increase, and off the top of my head, I think you said it was about uh, an additional 10% occupancy rate in their caravan parks, because people who then went to Bundaberg and only could stay the two or three nights in the RV parks, would have another couple of nights in paying the full price at the caravan parks. I, I just think that we're, we're missing an opportunity here. The way this economy is going, we need every single person we can get, from the, the bloke with a tent to the, the camper vans to the RVs. We don't have a strategy with 
um, marketing to attract those people to, to this show. We're just dipping out. And I, I just wanted to bring this to the point, bring it to the head, and let so that the, the, the people who have um, supported me on this and actually received quite a few emails since the, this was um, announced that I was going to bring it up from people I don't even know who, who have, are supporting this and have referred me to other, other places that they travel to that they never used to go to before. I just think if we stand still, the world's going to pass us by with this one. Um, but anyway, it's been brought up. Let's put it to the vote and move on.